Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jason here, uh, part three, Rickenbacker base build, Rickenbacker copy. So in the, uh, I have one concern with the base, and I'll tell you that here in about 30 seconds. So we got the neck, last video, we got the neck glued in. It's all glued in. But the one thing I noticed, and I don't know if you can tell, the neck actually angles up from the guitar. And what I mean by that, so this has been glued in completely flat. But this, most guitars, you're, you have a flat body, and when the neck comes off, the neck will be completely either parallel to the flatness of the body, or it goes down, like lot less Paul's. The neck will angle down a slight bit. This one, the neck is actually angling up. So you have the body coming over like this, and then the neck actually goes like that. Not that much, but very slightly. And I don't know if that's going to cause an issue to where... I might have to put that bridge extremely low. Uh, we'll find out if that causes an issue. It's it's very, very slight. You can barely tell. Just, you can barely just tell how that angles up a little bit. Hopefully that won't cause a problem. So, but the neck on this uh, guitar seems to be almost pretty much next to perfect, unlike the, uh, the Flying V I did. Now, as you can see, we got some stains here, some glue buildup. First thing I'm gonna do, is we're gonna stain, we're gonna clean up all this glue, sand it to the best I can. I don't know if that's some there. And then we're gonna use the blue painter's tape and we're gonna tape up the edge all the way around the body because then we're gonna stain the top, uh, the black rit dye. I'm gonna stain that black. More than likely it's gonna come out jet black. Then we're gonna hand sand it down to uh, get like kind of a half black, half wood grain type deal. Now, I'm pretty sure that's gonna look cool. And then we're, and then we'll do the same finish that we did on the Flying V. We're gonna do the polycrylic, and then we'll polish it with the headlight polish, and then put wax on it. But depending on how that looks, if that comes out really cool, I might do this with the black red dye. I'll tape up the edge of this, and then we'll just do that black also. We'll, we'll see, we'll see how this works. We're gonna do the body. I'm pretty sure that'll be fine. But the pro the thing is this has a nice clean edge of the binding. This does not. So we can tape this up, but the, the dye might bleed through. I don't know how well that'll look good on here, but I think that would really look cool to have this top body black and that neck just the top to match. Okay, not sure if you guys can, how well you can see this, but there's quite an open gap that is filled with glue, but you can kind of just see that a little too much. I'm gonna use some wood filler around the seam of this neck. Try to do a nice thin, very, very, very small thin line of wood filler to smooth so it looks like one piece. Okay, if I can get a close-up here. There's a little wood filler, kind of fill that crack in. And then right there, this side didn't need it, but I might have to end up staining the whole guitar that black and we'll see. Man, maybe that'll look good. We'll see what happens. Uh, definitely need to smooth out that sandy a little bit more. All right, guys, we've got the uh, body taped up. up part of the neck and all the binding so we can stain just this top see how that turns out hopefully i don't screw anything up should probably put some more tape down here around the neck part but then we'll start staining it okay guys sorry i forgot to press record on my phone to videotape this but there it is stained and i think i forgot um I think the instructions said there's a thin layer of glue on here, which is why this didn't stain jet black. It actually came out a really dark brown, but I actually, I like that. I don't need to sand that. I'll go, when once this dries, I'll go over it with like 400 or the 800 grit and just lightly, I actually like that dark brown. 
That's going to be cool. So I think I'm definitely going to do that head. I, I like that. I think that looks freaking cool. And we'll sand that down a bit. I don't think I want to do the whole guitar that, though. Okay, guys, here it is when I just took off the tape. Uh, that actually did a really good job as far as protecting the binding. I will, there's definitely some spots I'm going to have to sand and scrape a little bit. But I definitely like the look of just the dark top. So we're definitely going to do that to the headstock. I already taped it up. And we're going to try to do same thing on the headstock. Okay, guys, it's the next day. I got the Rickenbacker all cleaned up and exactly the way I want it. I got the binding sanded, sanded the binding to get a nice clean. It's not perfect, but it looks pretty damn good. And I really like this uh, distressed look. I also did that on the headstock. I think that's gonna look pretty cool. So all we're gonna do is apply polycrylic. We're gonna leave the entire back, the bare wood, and we're just gonna stain the whole thing as is. Obviously, we're gonna tape up the neck because obviously I don't wanna get polycrylic on the neck. We're gonna use the lemon oil on that, but um, we're gonna stay, we're gonna put a finish on it just as is. We're gonna have the distressed top and headstock and the whole back will be the bare wood. And I think that'll, I think that'll look pretty cool. Okay, Rickenbacker is coming out pretty good. Uh, this is kind of interesting though. After staining, turn it over. Definitely two different types of wood on here. Um, I forgot what the instructions said. I think it was a mahogany neck and a mahogany body. Uh, well, one of these is not mahogany, but I still like it, it looks cool. So we got two different pieces of wood there. I got that dark stain there, and then there'll be a fretboard color. It's be all sorts of different colors of wood and uh so i think i have about three or four coats of polycrylic all over and it's pretty rough especially these sides um the neck is really smooth but this wood whatever it is uh, definitely when it gets wet it really roughs up so um we're, this is probably going to take longer as far as finishing is concerned we're definitely going to have to do a lot of coats and sanding and coats to get it to where i don't care if it's a little a little rough but it's pretty bad all right the rickenbacker is drying from another coat i sanded the whole thing with 600 grit because uh, it was pretty rough and then we did another coat and while that's drying uh i am figuring out how to wire up the entire pick guard system now i've been standing here took about five ten minutes to figure this out let me see if i can zoom in so here here's the pickup Now, you actually have to take off the black plate piece that comes around. You take that off and then you install it on the pick guard. Now, if I uh, am correct here, what I, what I have figured out, I really like these quick connects. I, I thought I was going to have to solder on the Flying V and this one, but these have quick connects. All you have to do is um, just unplug them and run them through the appropriate hole in the body. Uh, the only one that's kind of a pain in the ass is the ground, but everything else connects real nice. Now, if you guys, in this particular Rickenbacker copy by Leo James, if this is hard, let me explain how this works, because I think I just figured it out. So each, you've got four knobs here and a toggle switch. Let me see if I can, because I installed the toggle switch. That's it right there. And then you've got the... The jack, your other pickup, uh, neck, bridge pickup, neck pickup, and then you've got four knobs and your toggle. So, pay attention to these. Each one, this will say B500K bridge volume, A500K bridge tone, neck volume, neck tone. Now, let's see if I can zoom in on this stupid little picture here. This is, okay. 
there's BT, uh, was a BV, NT. This is really, this is almost impossible to zoom in on my camera. But if you look real quick, so let's say BT, which is bridge tone. So that one, and this is underneath your pick guard. That's what they're. That's where they're going to go. And then you look over here. This one says A five A five hundred K. That one is this one A five hundred K bridge tone. And then you look for BT. That's right there. <laughs> so, on these knobs, they do tell you. Kind of upside down. Let me see if I can get a. A 500K. And you look over here. A 500K bridge tone BT BT. That'll tell you exactly where these all go. And I I think I've I've got it right there. And then uh, you just uh, bolt them in with a wrench which I don't know where the uh, little wrenches are, but I will find them. And then we'll, and then we'll have this all ready by the time I'm done with, that, with, with the actual guitar itself uh, after doing enough clear coat, and then we're gonna polish it and buff it with the wax. This will already be done and just ready to go inside. Okay, I got this hole all hooked up right here. One where I cannot get these knobs on anymore. They won't, they're really high up and I cannot push them down anymore. Uh, it's kind of stupid. I might, I don't want to drill them out inside, but I may have to to get them to push down flush. But um, that's not really a big deal. So uh, I got these all in and I, if you guys ever, ever have trouble with this, just remember, here's the toggle switch and you're going to have two that run here to run here. Both of these are have this little green capacitor, whatever this thing is. The two knobs that are connected together, they're gonna go in parallel like this. Whoosh, whoosh. And basically one, the top one is gonna power the bridge pickup. And then these two are going to power the neck pickup. Uh, let me see. I'm sorry, these two operate this pickup these two operate this pickup and uh, you just put them like that if that makes sense uh, they're kind of wired together to go into the toggle switch the toggle switch has wires that goes just to these two and then just to those two it's kind of hard to mix them up um, i guess it wouldn't really matter if you put those there or those there um, but i don't think you can like mitch mismatch them so and then and then here's your 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 cable jack and again all this is going to unplug and we can just slip it in there and route and then here's this one is your ground so uh i think i've been here about 20 minutes figuring this out got it down and um we'll see how so it's pretty cool you basically got you have a tone and a volume for each pickup tone volume tone volume whichever one it is and then you have a selector switch to go from neck uh, neck pickup, bridge pickup, or combine them. So kind of cool. We'll see how this uh, sounds, how it works out. I am a little pissed off that uh, these knobs are so damn high. <laughs> Not sure what to do about that. Let's see if I can fix that. So I tried to get these knobs off, and they just crack and break. Like I basically was using my paper towel as a little uh, grinder a tool to put on the wheels of my grinder and I'm sticking it underneath trying to pry it. I put it under paper towel so I don't scratch the pickguard and I'm just prying up. And these things are just snapping and chipping like they're made out of crackers. So I gotta go to Guitar Center and get some knobs. Thanks to Leo James for including the biggest piece of crap knobs you could possibly find. And it just keeps getting better. So I pulled this knob out and it took actually part of the uh, volume with it. So I think I can use my pliers and pry this out, and I think this will slip back in there, but uh, that just freaking came out. I don't know if it's broken or we're supposed to be welded. Uh, what a piece of shit this is. Jesus, man. What the freaking hell, Leo James? The hell kind of crappy-ass equipment is this? I can fix all this, but damn, man.
All right, guys, that's the end of part three. As you can see, the Rickenbacker's down here drying. Um, I think I'm just about done with all the finish on it. Um, I did like three or four, four coats of finish. Um, then I sanded it. Then I did two more coats. And I, I think I'll be done with it at that point. Nothing's bleeding or anything. I think it's pretty sealed. So tomorrow, we're going to polish it with the headlight polish. And then we'll buff it with that car wax like we did the Flying V. And now I got to go to Guitar Center and see if I can get four or more knobs. And I have to... I probably have to replace one of those electronic knobs. And then that means I have to cut those wires and freaking solder them. So pretty freaking pissed. Screw you, Leo James. Seriously, that is that is some shitty ass freaking material. I mean, even for 200 bucks, uh, I know it's cheap, but you should be able to do better than that. that. That's ridiculous. You can buy brand new $200 bases and the knobs and that stuff doesn't fall apart like that. So that's kind of messed up, really. So now I got to go spend probably at least another 20 bucks to fix this damn thing. In the end, it will be worth it. It'll look badass, but. All right, guys, stay tuned for uh, part four. Hopefully, in the maybe tomorrow, next couple of days. We'll see.